right, how we doing everybody? Welcome back for another episode of DCF Live, broadcasting to you guys from the DCF studio here in beautiful Southside Chicago. It is Friday, July 30th, August is upon us, and hopefully we finally have a nice little stream set up. I uh, went ahead and got some new stuff as far as uh, networking and, and a laptop here and all this, so hopefully we can get a uh, stream that goes off without a hitch for us. So hopefully everybody is having a great day. As of now, looks like everything is looking good and sounding good. I'm gonna wait for you guys to give me a little confirmation and then today we are gonna talk all about uh, growing as a sneaker customizer and using Instagram as, I think this is probably still the main platform that probably you know 95% of artists are using nowadays to show, show their portfolio and try to grow their following and such. So we're gonna dive into that today. We had a video drop yesterday that was uh, basically about my top 10 tips for how to use Instagram and how we can sort of beat that algorithm. And we'll be going over uh, a lot of that in more detail. And then we should be doing some uh, reviews of Instagram also. So let me go ahead and grab some of my show notes real quick. Just so I can refer to some of these and hopefully everybody has a uh, great week. And so uh, the, the top half of the show will probably go somewhere around maybe an uh, hour to two hours or so. The top half will be talking about Instagram and whatnot. Maybe at the end we'll do uh, a little bit of Q&A and such. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about what you guys were working on this week and uh, all that stuff. But looks like everybody says sounds good, looks good. That is, that is good to hear because there is nothing worse than hopping onto a stream. And uh, unfortunately, we, we've just had a, a string of bad luck trying to get it going and that's definitely prevented me from wanting to do different things with these streams and uh, I definitely want to do another all day stream where we uh, you know probably work on a different shoe for you know eight to ten hours or so an entire day because that was just one of the most fun things ever and it's hard to believe but that video has over a hundred thousand views where I painted the uh, chunky donkey Jordan ones last year and uh, just got a, a lot of great feedback and so many people have messaged me saying, hey, I watched this over a week or so or I broke it up into a few days and it was jam packed with information and all the little, you know, just hearing you guys blabber in the studio was fun. So we definitely want to do uh, another one of those. So let's see here. We are going to talk all about some of my tips for growing on Instagram, 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 Instagram in that always ever-changing algorithm and, and how do you break through it and how do you you know grow your following is it still even possible nowadays because I know how frustrating it could be sometimes you know you pour everything into your artwork and then you post it out to the world and you don't you know get the response that you thought you might get and that can be really frustrating or over time you say man I'm putting in the work to really grow as an artist but for some reason my following just won't grow so uh, let's see, some people saying they missed the lives. Yeah, feels good to be back. Thank you guys for joining us. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna walk through some of these top 10 tips. Um, and uh, the first one, aspect ratio. So everybody's gonna be scrolling through their phone super quick and you know, most cameras, if you're shooting with the DSLR, when you shoot landscape format, it's gonna be almost twice as wide as it is tall. So that's 16 by nine format. So when you go ahead and post that to Instagram, you're not taking up a lot of real estate. It's actually gonna be very small. So when people are scrolling through their phone, you could have you know, an absolutely amazing pair, but it can easily just sort of fall by the wayside because it's not taking up a lot of real estate on somebody's phone. So it's easy for them to scroll right past. And you know, shoes being that they are almost like a landscape format, they're almost twice as wide as they are tall a lot of times. They fill up that frame really easily on landscape format, especially if you're doing kind of one of those, you know, nice down low eye level shots, ground level shots, excuse me. You're going to really fill that frame nicely, but it's easy for that to just not take up enough uh, real estate on, on somebody who's scrolling through their phone. So you know, when you take a look at maybe some bigger pages that you follow on Instagram, like, you know, maybe some verified pages, whether it's like, you know, I follow a lot of sports pages. So let's talk about something like an ESPN or a Bleacher Report, some uh, type of page that actually has 
like a, um, a, a, a full team for marketing and advertising that's creating graphics for them. Well, if you take a look at all of their posts, they're all going to be in that four by five X aspect ratio. So the maximum size allowed on Instagram, and they're going to really take up a lot of space because they want to get you to engage with their posts. So sometimes you have to get a little creative with how you frame some of your shots. And um, you might have to just play around with some different things like how can I actually get these to, to really fill that frame nicely and get still like a really coherent pose. And so that's something that you have to work through at first. But, you know, this is at least something to, uh, to consider um, when it comes to, you know, how you're going to start doing some of your photography. The next one is all about tip number two is really all about engagement and just creating really engaging content. And I think it's just so easy for, for artists to want to let the artwork do the talking and not really inject themselves into the post, not showcase any of their personality or anything like that. But I always say it's really hard to build a brand without a face behind it. And once you become just a lot more relatable, like hopefully I come off as much more relatable to you guys through these live streams and through all the YouTube videos, you guys feel like, you know, hopefully some of my personality bleeds through a little bit, then all of a sudden, you know, you might be a little bit more likely to engage with my post whenever you see them on something like Instagram. And something that's funny when it comes to like captions, uh, we'll talk about captions a little bit later, but I think a great comment that I've read a few times from some people is that it says, uh, I feel like I read that caption in your voice. And that's a good thing because when you're writing captions, you want to almost write like you're talking to a friend. And so when people say, oh, I, I almost feel like I read that in your voice. I almost feel like I'm watching a video and just reading like subtitles. That's a really good thing. So that's how you know you're, you're going to be engaging with people. And uh, it's all about just becoming more relatable and not just like another cool shoe page that has, you know, pretty colors and cool designs and it's easy to scroll past unless it's a theme that's perfectly catered to you or something like that. Number three is just all about interaction and making sure that, you know, you're, you're convincing people to interact with your post in different ways. So there's four different ways you can interact with com content. You could do a like, a comment, a share, or a save, and each of them carries a different weight within the algorithm. And uh, a like is obviously the easiest to do. Quick double tap, scroll right past. Comment takes a little bit longer to do. And um, a, a save tells Instagram that, hey, I'm going to come back to this post later. I'd like to save it because otherwise I don't want to have to, you know, maybe I'm going to forget who posted this or I don't want to have to scroll back on their feed to find it so I could just save it in a collection and refer back to it later. Um, and then the best thing that Instagram likes the most is if you can get people to actually share your content. So you post something really cool and then all of a sudden people want to share it to all their friends and say, hey, check out what you know Dylan DeJesus did or whatever the case is. Instagram's really going to reward you for that. The next one is just about video, just posting some type of video content on your Instagram. And this is something that everybody should be doing because the head of Instagram himself said that the app is no longer just about photo sharing. And there's so much you can do with video. People love seeing the process. You know what I mean? Uh, even if you're not really into the craft, sometimes it's still really cool to see the process of any craft being done. So if anybody, you know, scrolls through TikTok or even Facebook or Instagram, you'll see it all the time of just, you know, different videos for maybe like a, a, a cooking video. I see tons of cooking videos on TikTok that I think are pretty cool and I don't really cook very often, but it's still cool to watch these videos and see how people do it and, and see how they bring together, uh, you know, this masterpiece in, in 60 seconds or so. So video, there's a lot you could do, just time lapses, you know what I mean, of taking it, there's something beautiful about taking an all white shoe, a blank canvas and turning it into something that's so cool. Uh, and a lot of people are definitely going to enjoy seeing that. So just experiment with it. And, and that dives right into, um, you know, all of the other features that Instagram offers, whether it's reels or even posting little, little tid, tidbits on uh, your stories. These are things that just further encourage engagement on your post. And it's, it's just so easy as an artist to just say, I just need to move on from project to project and not worry about all the other stuff. I just need to bang out as many client orders as possible. But then it's just so easy for your content to sort of lack and then you to not really grow. So it's definitely a balancing act of, of getting out a ton of artwork into the world, but then really creating content um, that's going to help grow your following. You know, because if, if you're not able to do that, then sometimes you could be the best artist in the world. There's so many good artists that I know and follow on Instagram, but it's it's just unfortunate when you see it seems like they're a little bit stagnant or they're not able to grow. And it's really just because they haven't taken, it's not that they can't do it. It's not that nobody can't do it. It's just that you have to really carve out time for yourself 
in order to really plan out and make your content better. It's, it's just, I know what it's like to be in that hamster wheel of client order, client order, client order. I gotta just, I have all these deadlines and I just need to get out of these orders. But then, like I said, you just really need to make sure you're taking the time to plan out that content. This way we can continue to grow our business. Putting out content into the world is how you're gonna grow your business. It truly is. It, it really comes down to that. And of course you have to have the content of the good artwork to attract people, but then really getting the most out of um, everything you do. And if there's enough um, enough good feedback from you know yesterday's video and, and hopefully this live, which I think there will be, I think that a, a video idea I've wanted to do for a little bit is something along the lines, the, the loose working title is something like how I make a hundred pieces of content for every single project. So let's say I have this pair of uh, Bumblebee Jordan 6s right here. How can I make 100 pieces of content around these? And that probably sounds really crazy and that the number might be less than that. I might only be able to come up with 50 or something like that. But there's definitely still a substantial amount when I'm sure you guys know and, and maybe you're one of those artists who typically only really post maybe one piece of content for every project that they're doing. Maybe you only go and you take one photo of every pair or every project that you're working on. And, um, you know, that's just, it, it's, it's not enough because of how hard, how competitive and how hard it is to grow on all these social media platforms. And, um, I guess like a, a common phrase that you would hear is it's sort of part of the game and you gotta, you gotta sort of play the game, uh, nowadays, unfortunately. So, uh, Saltwater Hydro says, is there an editing program for vids that you suggest? So the one that we use is called, uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. We use the full Adobe suite. So Adobe Lightroom to edit photos, Adobe Photoshop to do, you know, other type of photo edits and then Adobe Premiere Pro for video editing. And so if you're a student or if you know, everybody knows a student, whether it's a little sibling or yourself or a cousin or a friend, you can get a student discount and get all of their programs for, I think, $20 a month. Um, I don't even think you have the option to just flat out buy the program forever anymore. I think you have to have a monthly subscription because they always want to send you the updates. Whereas before you used to pay like a couple hundred dollars to buy the program once, but it wouldn't, you know, wouldn't update. I think that's how it is. But otherwise, if you're just looking for a free one, there is Adobe Rush, which is on your phone. And I believe I'm pretty, I have it on my phone. I'm pretty sure that's a free editing software or a lot of times, you know, it, depending on where you're talking about it, but Instagram reels or TikTok, you're allowed to film and edit videos within there. So, you know, a, a lot of people are doing that. They're just using the native app for their actual video editing. So that's certainly uh, possible to do. Uh, just a couple other tips and then we'll check out a few people's Instagram. So who's ever interested, definitely let me know if you're interested in having your uh, Instagram looked at today. Uh, just a couple other tips. We talked a little bit about real stories, captions and tags. I think trying to find uh, pages that repost custom sneakers could be really helpful for you. So we posted one yesterday. It's called Custom Kicks World. And I think it has somewhere around maybe 30 to 50,000 followers. But if you could get reposted by this page, that's really cool because um, all, typically all 30 to 50,000 followers of that page are going to be people that really enjoy custom sneakers. So that's a really good thing because, you know, that's the audience that you sort of want to go after, whether it's other artists who might be following that page or potentially uh, potential buyers. You know, I might be a, a buyer and I might be scrolling and see this page, Custom Kicks World, and it posts all custom shoes. Oh, I happen to like custom shoes. Let me go ahead and follow it. And, and those might be some buyers that you're hoping to attract. So uh, of course, if you could get reposted by any of the big paint brands like an Angelus or a Jacquard or an Alpha 6, they have decent sized followings too and, and they post artist work. So that's really cool. So trying to get reposted is a, uh, is a big thing on, um, on Instagram also. Uh, let's see, a couple follow-ups for editing here. Night Owl says, hey Dylan, uh, Snapseed on iPhone is a great photo editing app. It is, Snapseed has a ton of uh, a ton of tools that you can use. I have Snapseed on my phone, so sometimes if I ever just take a picture, you know, on my phone and I wanna edit it real quick, this isn't something that I take with, uh, you know, with, with our camera, I might go ahead and throw it in a Snapseed and, and just apply little edits on there. It's a great software. Definitely. Yeah. So if you're looking, if, you, if you're like, look, I don't want to spend money on these softwares, Snapseed's a great option just for uh, doing a lot of your basic and, and sort of your advanced photo editings. It's not just the, you know, the basic like six tools that you get on Instagram where you could tweak the brightness, contrast, vibrance, saturation. Snapseed has even more. So that's a great one. Um, 
Let's see. Da, da, da. Easy Fit says DaVinci Resolve is free on PC and is super followed. I didn't know that DaVinci was uh, was free. Yeah, DaVinci is one of probably the three biggest uh, video editing softwares. The three biggest ones would be uh, Premiere Pro, which is available on Mac or PC, uh, Final Cut, which I think is Mac only, and then DaVinci, which I believe might be PC only. I'm not sure if you could run DaVinci on Mac. Um, of course, there's some workaround, but I'm not sure if it's like a native app. Uh, let's see. Owen says, besides shoe customizing and tattoos, what other forms of art do you have interest in? Um, Owen, I would say that I probably, um, you know, another form of art that I really enjoy is, is graffiti. Um, but, but similar to tattooing, just like how I don't have any tattoos, I'm not much of a graffiti artist, nor have I ever done uh, graffiti, even though the graffiti scene here in Chicago, um, is really cool. And it's something that I would certainly love to, to try one day in, you know, in, in a legal capacity, um, just playing around. I think that would be really cool, but other forms of art, um, you know, I, I think my, my next favorite form of art, if we're not just talking about like painting would definitely be film. I, I think that, um, I love, I'm a huge movie fan and I love, you know, the art of movies and the art of filmmaking. Um, and that's, I think why I like YouTube a lot because, um, there's a, there's a filming, filmmaking aspect to it. Uh, to YouTube, even if it's, you know, certainly on an amateur level. Um, but there's there's something really cool about bringing a, a story to life through through video that I definitely really enjoy. Uh, DaVinci has a native Mac app too. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Is there a specific adhes adhesive promoter you like to use? So you actually, uh, um, it's, it's adhesive. <laughs> I, I always think it's funny because the words typically can get mess messed up and they're two very different things. There's adhesion promoter and then there's adhesive spray. So adhesive spray is almost like a glue. It's like if you wanted to stick together two pieces of, you know, foam board as like a school project, you might use something like a spray adhesive. But if you're talking... Uh, what you're referring to is called Adhesion Promoter, and uh, the one that I use is Rust-Oleum brand. Um, so yeah, it's funny because I always I always just want to clarify that because I don't want people to Google the wrong thing. Like adhes adhesive sprays near me, and then they go to this store and they pick up Elmer's adhesive spray and apply that onto their shoes, and then you just put uh, glue on there, <laughs> and that's that's uh, that's not what you want. Um, Jason says, so no interpretive dance. Yeah, I, uh, I love some good Irish folk dancing too, Jason. You better believe it. You better believe it. Um, okay, let's wrap up here. Final few tips for Instagram would be uh, posting at the right time. You know what I mean? So, so diving into your insights on Instagram and seeing what time are your followers most active. You know what I mean? There's not going to be, you, you're not going to see a, a huge uptick in the charts. But, you know, you always just want to try to give yourself the best chance to win. You know what I mean? Why it, let's just say you're in a different country than the U.S. And, um, but a lot of your followers are in the U.S. Let's just say, you know, that's your case. You don't want to then post when, you know, all of America is sleeping somewhere around, you know, maybe 3 a.m. Uh, between 1 and 3 a.m. for most of America. If over by you, that might be the middle of the day if you're on the other side of the world or something like that. And then you don't want to post too late. So let's just say now you are here in America. I'm here in Chicago, so we're on central time you know, uh, let's just call it late at night. I don't want to go posting at 11 o'clock at night when most people are sort of not going to be as active on social media. People might already be sleeping or, you know, if you're kind of like myself, you might be on your, on your uh, phone in bed. I'm a pretty bad, a bad habit of a uh, little bit of phone before our bed. I'm sure there's a ton of science that says that that's terrible for you and your, in your sleep patterns and whatnot that uh, I'm sure would probably help me get even better sleep. But I am, I am one of the people that does that. I'm sure other people could relate to that. So, um, and then our last one would be the carousel. Ah, Instagram's carousel, something I haven't done in over three years because uh, I'm hard-headed and have a, a, a stupid Instagram theme that I uh, f force myself into. But, but, um, something that always pops in my head is multiple brands, including eBay, who gave me one of the biggest contracts ever last year, um, for, uh, for their eBay 25th anniversary said that they really enjoyed my Instagram and they loved the feed and they thought it was super clean. And, you know, I was an artist that they definitely wanted to work with. So 
anytime I think about, man, I'm just gonna let go of this theme that I created where I do three posts for every project, one sort of main money shot photo, one video, and then one detail shot. Every time I think about breaking that, I then think, man, I, I've built this up for three years and, I, and I've been told that it looks good. So I, don't, I, I, gotta, I gotta stick to it. So um, the only reason I don't do the carousel is because then there's an additional little icon when you go over to the main feed and you're scrolling past and I want it to be clean and uh, it's probably not a, a good enough reason to not do the carousel, but you can really do a, a lot with the carousels because you can post up to 10 pieces of content. You could do photo and video. And I've seen some of my favorite, uh, some of the best carousels I've seen are um, from, sometimes you'll get infographics and every slide, you know, like you have to continue swiping. You're gonna swipe through all 10. And I think that's something that customizers could do is just sort of storyboard a project. Tell about a whole project from start to finish through 10 different pieces of content. You know what I mean? You could start, first one could be the completely blank shoe and all the way at the end, the final payoff is the is the finale. Or deconstruct a story. So at the beginning, the very first post, that's gonna live on your feed could be the final project and then everybody gets to see the process in re reverse order. That could be something really cool too. So there's a lot that you could definitely, uh, a, so much that you could do with it and um, definitely experiment with carousels and uh, just just try to look at what's working for other people on Instagram. This is what you wanna do anytime you're, you're considering trying to grow on any platform. Just take a look at what's working for some other creators that you really enjoy and, and try to put your own spin on that. And so, yeah, if there's um, some other big, some other questions about Instagram, I would be more than glad to, uh, to talk about that. And uh, I think we'll keep a lot of today's stream. We'll dive into some reviewing some Instagram shortly. We'll talk a lot about Instagram before we go into just totally open uh, Q&A sort of at the end of the episode. And um, yeah, if you haven't already, uh, definitely make sure at some point, maybe over the weekend, check out the video that we posted yesterday, Top 10 Tips. I think that it was a, a pretty nice and tight video. Obviously, Instagram, I wanted to do a follow-up live stream because then I could just sort of be you know, uh, uh, talk about it for as long as I want, but this is a nice tight, I think it's like a nine minute video. It's hard for me to, to jam pack a lot of information into nine minutes because I love to talk and I could go on forever. So that's what I really enjoy about these live streams. There's less pressure to, to keep everything nice and tight. So Lizban says, I have the same pro same reason for not using a carousel. Yep, I'm, I know there's other people too. Uh, let's see. Uh, Josh Carpenter here says, one thing that helped me was posting my shoes into actual groups, fans of Wu-Tang Group for my first customs. Absolutely, something that I've done a lot is because um, I have done a lot of sports team themed shoes in the past. So um, searching up, you know, those Facebook groups or, or wherever, pages that are all about like, let's say I, I do a Detroit Lion shoe, go ahead and post it into, you know, Detroit Lions groups. So in this case, we're looking at a Bumblebee shoe here. If I go ahead and post this to, you know, a Transformers fan group, that could go uh, a long way. And and something that I always think is is a good idea too, totally I, um, off the subject as far as Instagram goes, but going to conventions and having, you know, themed shoes for something like that. So let's just say like, um, you know, like a like a Comic Con. I think these these are probably in all the major cities around the U.S. But going to a Comic Con and having a table now, Comic Con would be super expensive because that's one of the biggest conventions out there. But if you went to a Comic Con table um, and you had, um, you know, a bunch of shoes and a bunch of artwork based off of uh, of some of you know the different characters, that could be super super cool too. I don't think that any of those. Um, Marvel or DC, I haven't heard of any of them being too strict on artists for copyright or licensing, especially, it's, it's really all about definitely always making it look like it's fan art and not that you're mass producing. So, for example, you wouldn't want to go to a Comic-Con and have a uh, Captain America Jordan 1 and say you have a hundred pairs available in every size, because then it looks like you're mass producing, you know what I mean? It, it really removes the element of it being fan art. But if you went ahead and took 10 shoes and they were, you know, all the different uh, Avengers and whatnot, that would be, uh, you would you would obviously, you would drum up a, a, a ton of business doing that. But Comic-Con, I, I think I've looked into it before. I know the tables there are super duper expensive, but, you know, different uh, fan conventions for, for whatever it is, sports or anything like that, you know, that could be 
uh, people who are willing to pay to sort of have a, a trophy piece or they're willing to pay anything to have something that has their favorite team or character on it. Those could be uh, really good for you. Uh, Mithril Brush Custom says, how do you feel about some of the custom shoe Facebook groups? I've posted in a few before and it's nice for getting a bunch of likes, but people always try and undersell you. Yeah, you know, because it, it, it's a competitive space, of course, there's, you know, there's always going to be somebody willing to do it cheaper than you, and that's totally okay. You know what I mean? But that doesn't mean that you always have to undersell yourself, you know, especially when you, you over time, as you do it more and more, you'll definitely start to really understand your value and your time and how valuable that is that, you know, you're not always going to be able to compete with everybody because there's always going to be new people and, and somebody willing to do it cheaper. So that's nothing to ever, uh, to ever, you know, to, to take personal or anything like that, because no matter what, there's always going to be someone willing to do it cheaper, but something nice about Facebook, um, even though this always becomes harder to do versus, you know, years back is you have that potential of going viral. If you make the right post and a bunch of people are sharing it, you get a couple thousand shares on Facebook, that could be huge for you. So I know in 2016, we did a pair of uh, uh, Bel Air, white Bel Air Roches, and uh, we ended up selling a, a couple, of, I don't even know how many of them, hundreds. And it was because we had thousands of shares on Facebook and it was just a simple photo of them. And uh, I'd be curious to see how many uh, thousands of shares that post actually had. But over time, over probably a year or so, we, we sold hundreds of these shoes. And I know a large majority of that was through that Facebook post. And it was just posted to uh, a custom sneaker group. I can't even remember which one and just was, was shared. And sometimes you just sort of catch lightning in a bottle. So let's see here. Uh, Lyndon Jacobs says, or nope, let me see. Sorry. Erica Calhoun says, how do you choose a personal brand over a business brand? Could you explain the difference if possible? Yeah, so um, I think that if you want to look at some of your insights, I think it is you need to be a creator account or a business account. I don't think it could be a personal one. If you're referring to uh, Instagram, let me know, Erica. But just on there, you get um, you know some different insights to sort of see how your posts are performing. I think Instagram might not allow you to see that if you're just sort of a personal page. If you're just a regular person hanging out on Instagram, just you know sort of posting whatever. You're not trying to necessarily grow your Instagram following. You just have the app, um, you know, to be on the app and, and, and post to your friends and whatnot. You're not trying to reach people all across the world. Um, you know, that Instagram might assume, okay, this person doesn't need to know about their, their insights and all that and all, all that data. Um, so I think creator is, you know, just going to be the best option for you or, or the business one, but there's not too much other differences there. There used to be some, uh, a little bit of a thought that, um, you know, certain, if you keep your page as a personal page, it's better for you to, you know, it's going to show it to more of your following and you're, you're, you're just going to get better. You're going to get more likes on it and all that stuff versus a, a business page. They want you to pay to promote on there and all that stuff. There was some definitely a, a, a line of thought that that was the way it was for years, but I don't really think that's probably the case. So yeah, uh, let's see. Listman here says, how are you handling the rest of glue left there? Sometimes it's on a new shoe, mostly on the part of the shoe that sticks together with the sole. Yeah, sometimes you might get a, uh, a, a an Air Force or a Jordan 1 where, where there's a ton of... Uh, you know they didn't they didn't glue it too well and you get a lot of that glue left over it's it's probably worse on some of the on some of the other jordans like jordan threes or fours man they have some terrible glue sometimes um but a lot of times that's going to come off you know whether you 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 s tone it off or through your sanding through your prep um should be should be one that uh you're able to handle uh, Lisbon says music in in the stories is a big difference. You don't get that much to choose when having a business account. Oh, you interesting. Okay, I didn't know that one. That one's interesting though. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and post um, uh, music to your to your stories, you might not be able to use some some songs that might be copyrighted or something. Interesting. I don't use that feature too often about adding the music to the stories, but I didn't know that because I feel like I think I'm on the I'm on the creator account and I I believe I have access to any song I have uh, searched down before. Lyndon Jacobs says, Vans always have those on the old schools. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of shoes that, that it's, it's kind of amazing sometimes the, the craftsmanship that it's like, 
wow, me as, uh, as, as, as an artist, it almost feels, I, in tons of other customizers, it's like we're able to do a better job than how they come from, you know, the factory. So that's pretty crazy. Okay, Erica says, yes, for Instagram, thank you, that was very helpful. Okay, good, good, good. So yeah, what is, uh, how, did, how did everybody's week go? What did everybody work on? I worked on uh, that video for four days straight. So that's what I was on all of this week, scripting it, the filming, the editing, and uh, that video that we posted. Um, <laughs> there's so much to, to editing to video, especially when I really wanted to, to just be totally engaging. Hopefully you really wanna make it so that people never feel like, um, they want to click off the video because they're constantly engaged. So I try to keep, you know, our standalone videos and of course the lives as engaging as possible. So ho hopefully that uh, came across in, in yesterday's video because there was there was a ton going on. The timeline for the for the video file was was absolutely crazy. So then next week I have there might not be a YouTube video next week. It might I might only do a live towards the end of the week because I have a 15 pair order that I have to knock out uh, next week and uh, haven't even started on them yet. So that's gonna be a fun one. That is something for the Detroit Pistons next week and it is due on Friday and I have to find a box that I can fit all 15 pairs and that probably won't be possible. 15 is a lot. I think I've shipped maybe 12 in a box before so I probably might need to do it in two separate shipments but then I gotta pay more, of course. So, but 15, that would be, that would be a really big box. So we'll see if I'm able to get that. Uh, Night Owl says, I'm currently working on an anime pair still. It's been taking a little while. Easily 40 to 50 hours pairs when it will be done. I did. I have seen those on your stories. Those look awesome, man. It's been cool to see the progress on those. Those are absolutely crazy. Uh, Easy Fit says, you should buy an A1 so that you can upload an AK. What what brand is A1? Is that a, is that a Sony? Is, does Sony make the uh, A1? And that camera's uh, AK. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. Uh, I think like MKBHD is like the only YouTuber I know who who actually uploads his videos in 8K even though uh, Instagram does, or YouTube doesn't even allow videos to be viewed in uh, 8K yet. Um, but he says, oh, I do it just because I know somewhere down the line, YouTube's gonna allow you to view videos in 8K and then some of my back catalog will be, um, will be uh, viewable in 8K. So that, that's funny, but... Um, the the video files i mean i don't i don't record in 4k on the camera that i use a canon eos r and the video files are just hundreds and hundreds of gigs it's absolutely crazy so i can't even imagine an 8k because i think that would mean like 4k to 8k even though it's double the number i'm pretty sure that means it's four times the file size 4k to 8k even though it's just double I think it means four times the file size. It might mean eight times the file size. So I just, I can't even imagine. It must be absolutely crazy. Easy fit says Sony, yeah. Uh, Customs by G. Gina, hey, how you doing? Working on a Joker and Batman Air Force One. That's really cool. That's always, I uh, always like that sort of, how are you gonna take two really different characters like that and how are you gonna balance it? And are you gonna try to make it look like, you know, one cohesive sort of pair of shoes or are they gonna be two totally separate things? I think a lot of times when I've done a, a Batman versus Joker theme, I've done basically two very, very different shoes. Cause I think that's pretty cool. Um, I think like one of the first pairs I saw that did that was that I I know not a, I loved and, and was really highly regarded was the uh, what the Kobe sixes. And um, or was it the eights? They were the what the Kobe eights. Yeah, they were the eights, not the sixes. And um, I've, I've loved that ever since, doing doing the mismatch ones. Uh, Jason says, did you get any pairs into the Olympics? I did not. That would have been, that would have been really cool, though. Uh, has, anybody, has anybody seen? Uh, what's the coolest thing you guys have, have seen in the Olympics so far? I like to watch uh, men's volleyball. I played volleyball in high school. And uh, if you ever watch competitive, like, of course, obviously, the Olympics are professional volleyball. It's just absolutely insane how athletic these guys are. And I mean, it's like you're watching a video game because it's like, how do people, how do people play at that level? Like, where are these humans created that they're that athletic, can jump and hit that hard? It's absolutely crazy. So, um, Blue says, what's a shoe you love to work on but never get many requests for? I think I'm, I want to make it my permanent answer for these, the Adidas Continental 80s. I love that shoe, and I have only worked on one, and it wasn't even for a client. It was just a pair we did for a giveaway. 
Um, and it was a, uh, we did a Kid See Ghost theme back when that uh, Kid Cudi and Kanye West joint album dropped. And I absolutely love that as a bass shoe. I wish more people wanted pairs of those. Uh, I have a, a picture of them hanging up in my studio because um, those are just, it, it's a beautiful bass shoe and I love just the shape of it. And, and every shoe presents different, every silhouette presents like a different shape of canvas per se and, and how you're going to sort of compose your artwork and i just love how you can compose art on a pair of uh, continental 80s so tom's world says i just did a giant steam air force one and the tracing paper method helped a lot with the logo very cool i am very glad to hear that tom and uh i'd love to see those i'd love to see those and uh did the giants make any other big moves at the uh, trade deadline no they were in talks for uh, chris bryant Cubbies were having a fire sale, but my socks, man, added us a good bullpen arm, and we are ready for October. Carnell Jeffrey says, I did some awesome Miami Dolphins Air Force Ones. I tagged you in the post. Fear None Custom Apparel is my page name. I will definitely check that out. Ba -ba -ba. Lyndon Jacobs says, I finally launched my first website for Lyndon's Customs, and I wrote my first blog, inspired by you to give value to all my followers and other customizers. Lyndon, I would love to check that out. I definitely will. I think that's super cool. I would love to be more active with a with a blog. Um, however, the medium of writing is something that I very much do not enjoy, so a blog um, doesn't really work for me. Now, that's not to say that I can't get somebody to just you know help transcribe my message because um, I think there's just a, a, a blog can still be very, very, very valuable. And that's something that I would, I would love to, to be a little more active with. We do have one. Um, so if you ever head to our website, to jesusinc.com, there is a blog, but I think there's only a couple posts. Um, I think the last one was about the Chunky Dunky Jordan ones. And we just talked about how we did a live stream and posted all of our photos to it. But I love the the aspect of you can really just tell a lot about a a project through the blog because you can post all of your photos you're not limited to like it being on a small screen like instagram or, or how it's going to be set up you can post any type of photos you want videos and you know tell the message through through word which is which is really cool so uh mithril says i'm working on a future rama jacket at the moment actually listening to this while i paint very cool i uh I want to do a uh, another jean jacket in uh, come the fall. I got to make one for myself. Uh, Darius Harrison says, "Who designed your logo?" I actually had my friend Ryan. Shout out to my buddy Ryan Seeper, childhood friend who now lives out in Cali. Uh, he wasn't Long Beach for a while, but now I think he's closer to uh, San Diego. I want to say, and um, yeah, he designed my logo for me. He's a killer graphic design artist. He does. Um, it, I can't even remember his job title because he's he's worked on so many really cool gigs. He's done stuff for the um, for for like either NASA or for the military. Like he's just done all this this crazy cool stuff. And and what he's currently working on is always changing. But yeah, he's the man for that. We we posted a video probably uh, at the start of the year, and it was about you know build, I think the video probably has a title of something like building a brand. And we go into talking about logo design and all that stuff. And then there's a live stream. There's a follow-up live stream to that video called, um, I think it's called How to Grow Your Custom Sneaker Business. And um, we go a lot into branding and logo and stuff like that. And we even go into some really nice, that's one of my favorite live streams because we even go into some really nice infographics for um, uh, some logos and whatnot. So that's a cool one. Jason says, I think the most impressive thing I've seen at the Olympics this year is the Philippines getting their first gold medal ever. That's interesting. I didn't know the, the Philippines got their first one. That's pretty cool. Da, da, da. Let's see. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into some Instagram. So if anybody is interested in having their Instagram checked out, you go ahead and let me know. And uh, 40 minutes in, still seems like our stream is going good. Looks like this setup worked for us. That is good to hear. As you can see, I got the uh, the yellow legal pad. Something about old school writing stuff down. I mentioned it in a live stream a while ago. I think our last live stream, which is probably maybe three weeks ago, maybe a month ago at this point. But I have been doing a to-do list every single day with eight things on there every single day and I've kept up with it for 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 a couple months now 
and uh, just something about writing stuff down and being able to cross it off and this was the, the, the script here for the YouTube video really trying to plan stuff out just trying to up my organization game because uh, I have needed that a lot okay here we'll go with the uh, the first one here so El Sneaker Hefe says yeah man Grail Crew Customs awesome buddy hopefully you're doing well let's go ahead and check that out here let me go ahead and switch over and let's see that should have the phone that has the phone beautiful okay we are going to grail crew and then underscore grail crew underscore oh we yes let's take a look at look at that the creation of adam air force ones beautiful man these are so sick i love this theme love this shot too of course with the nice edited background looks really good oh what i really like about these two i didn't notice at first glance is a little bit of the texture that you added and it's not just the completely you know still factory white air force one i thought it was at first at first glance especially because this first shot's a little bit brighter so i thought it was still the all whites but i love these man perfect composition the way that you have it set up and uh yeah, these are great, man. Those are really good. We have some some mids here. Air Force mids. Underutilized shoe. You see a ton of uh, lows and highs, but these look really good with the Naruto theme. Let's see some of the other stuff. We have some reels. Oh, this is one that you tagged me in. Yeah, so this is the uh, little TikTok trick that we posted about where you snatch this shoe. Let's go ahead and let everybody see this one. I got a kick out of this one. There it is, the mock-up. Boom, yep. Everything stayed perfectly still. Um, you didn't see, it's very hard for you to, to see the cut. It's, it's to, the, to, the, to anybody just looking for the first time, it's gonna be very hard to notice any cut. Even take a look at the mon, even look at the screen. You don't even see it move that much, which is really cool to do. Because it's easy for the laptop to shake a lot when you go ahead and uh, sort of snatch it like that. So great work, man. You did you did really good with the video there. Yeah, great stuff. Where's the pair that you showed me the other day? Because we talked on Instagram Live. These, these are, I absolutely love these. When, I, when you sent me these in uh, the DM, these made my jaw drop a little bit. I mean, this is badass. This is obviously a base shoe that you don't see a ton of, but th this... This color palette, the consistency of the line work here, just badass, man. Like, sometimes you just nail the, the balance. Like, this shoe is so perfectly balanced of having badass detailed artwork on the swoosh and midsole versus the rest of the upper is just solid it's just almost blank you know what i mean it's white it's gray it's neutral but then you just go ahead and the balance that you created i, I just love it like this is a pair that i could just stare at um for so long because they just work so well killer job with these man killer job with these love these too really good stuff man all the shots are good good old warhawk theme i love i love this this gritty photo so if i had to guess let me know. I'd be curious to know where you shot this. Is this indoor with artificial lighting or is this outdoor and you're maybe just in the shade or I'm, I'm trying to get a feel for the area that you're in for where these photos are because this photo set is sick with just like how dark and gritty it is. I'd be curious to know where where uh, those are. Oh, Ace of Custom. Oh, you did Ace of Customs. Very cool. And one. Oh, badass. Congratulations, man. Oh, very cool. That's super dope. Congratulations on that, man. Oh, we got another pair of the uh, the adapts. The owner let me freestyle these. Yeah, look at that, man. Ooh, wee. Ooh, wee. Get this man some more, uh, some more adapts in his hand. Like this, like I, this is 100% something that I like, I would love to wear, you know, because it's, like the balance is just perfect i've never worn any of the uh adapts are they super comfortable does anybody know i'm curious um but yeah look at these man so sick 
Love this style, man. Yeah, you give this guy uh, the chance to do a freestyle and you're going to get something back sick. So you said uh, warehouse at work, natural light. Okay, yep, very cool. Very cool, looks great. Let's see some of the other stuff. Yeah, great feed, man. Great feed, really cool. Of course, a little bit more video I'd love to see. Let's check out some. Yep, this is awesome right here. Time lapse. You get to see the uh, the creation of Adam Hand actually come into life. Badass. Super easy to watch and follow, and, and you love seeing it come to life. So that's a great video. This is a reels for it. <laughs> you want these hands? Yep, so you add a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a comedic element too. That's great. This is a really good one. Yeah, keep it up, man. Sometimes, uh, you know, the sometimes the best thing that that I can say is is more of the same. You know what I mean? Because what you're doing is 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 going good. Bios clean, logos clean, active on the stories, uh, doing Instagram TV, doing reels, doing videos, doing time lapses. Your shots themselves. These are great simple shots. Could you play with the aspect ratio a little bit? Sure. You know what I mean? But is just that going to overnight blow anybody up? No. But just something to at least consider really good stuff really good stuff and uh hopefully i get to see more of the uh, adapts from you because man i i love that i love those i want to uh i'm gonna need to buy a pair of the adapts to send to you to make these for me i actually like these the the ones with the dark gray uppers more than the uh the light gray that looks like the same as the uh the air mags those are sweet man great job great job Okay, let's see here. Do, do, do. Who wants to go next? Let me know. Ba, ba, ba. Great feed, buddy, and keep up the good work, Grail Crew Customs. Do, do, do. <laughs> Okay, let's do Gina here. Customs by G. Let's check it out. Customs by G. Gina. The Gina, I think one of my it's hard to say which of my which of your pairs is my favorite. But it's pretty hard for it to not be the Breaking Bad Air Forces. I mean, let me let me make sure. Is there an even bigger detail shot? Because I just want to zoom in as close as possible for everybody else to see these. I mean, that that will take your breath away. That is spectacular. So good. There are so many things about this that work. The character just bleeding off into the glass is just incredible. That little, little slight glow over his right back shoulder is just absolutely perfect and why it works even stronger just looking at the portrait is because of that little dark it's so incredibly tiny dark line that you have because if you take a look at um walter's right side here obviously the back half it, it's it's that's the light source so it's very bright but right next to it there's a dark line that then separates the little glow you have behind your shoulders, and that's what really pulls that character forward. So there's so much to a great portrait that really brings it to life, and a little detail like that is is one of those things that really brings it to life. I mean, this is <sighs> just beautiful. Just beautiful. Uh, let's see, I know you've posted a couple reels. This is a cool one. Just, just killer work. It's just insane how good the portrait work is. Okay, so trying to do some quick transitions on this. I did. I do think I seen this one too. This is cool. So let's see. How did your views do for the reels? Did they do good? A couple thousand views, definitely. Six thousand on this one. Untaping of these. Let's go ahead and check out this untaping here. Gina, how long on the uh, Walter White portrait? Let me know how long. Very curious. 
Yeah, it'd be, I'm super curious to know how fast you're able to to knock those out nowadays. Being that that's a, definitely what you specialize in. So it looks like you were doing the um, you know the three posts per project um, thing. Did you have you decided to stop that, or are you waiting on another post for the uh, the Marley Air Force ones? But yeah, I love these. Like this is this is just a, a, a badass feed where all of your main your money shots. You do a cool edited background, obviously for the Bob Marley pair. Then for you know these fish Air Force ones, it's called the Bad Fish. Okay, I wasn't sure the name of that fish. And then the Walter Whites, and then the Warhawk Air Maxes. You always have the clean edited background. Um, I love those. And then you have some detail shots. I think doing a reel for all of these definitely a great idea. Um, I really like this too. Seeing the progress, this is cool. I think that I think that more progress shots would. Um, Post in the last, okay, you're posting the last Marley shot tomorrow. Cool, cool. I think that I really like these shots too, where you were doing a bunch of your progress shots for a while. I mean, this is, this is incredible to see. I mean, how cool is this shot up here where you see a, a pencil drawing, but then you just see it's, it's, it's near completion for his eyes and nose. And you can just, you feel like you could almost touch that, but yet it's up against just a, a line drawing. That's so cool to see and really see uh, Ryu here come, come to life is, is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I mean, because the artwork is just absolutely incredible, now it's just about, for you, Jen, I think, for growing, it's just about how can you get as much content as possible out of your artwork? Because how long I know those pairs take, you're only going to be able to crank out so many pairs in any time period. So you're only going to be able to do so many pairs of shoes per year based off of how long you spend on each pair. So how can you really make your content stretch? How can you really make sure that, you know, these, because the way you have it set up now is once you go ahead and make three posts for the project, I haven't seen you do any repost down the line. So you know, as you gain new followers and, and time gets further away and people forget about things, this Breaking Bad pair was in April, but how can we make sure that you're then able to still have content surrounding these and you can re go ahead and repost these come six months down the line in, in October or November or December or next year, whatever the case is, how can you still have more content to post about these? I think your biggest task is, uh, is quantity uh, of content at this point. That's probably the next biggest hurdle for you. And that just comes from the planning phase because it's hard. You know what I mean? Because like I said, I mean, your artwork is so incredible that, I mean, I know some of these pairs take you anywhere from 50 to 100 hours probably that you need to make sure you can get plenty of content out of it that it doesn't just, that it can live on past just the the, the week that you're posting them and whatnot. Um because, I mean, your style and the artwork is, that is the furthest thing from uh, you achieving the, the the next level. So that's something uh, I'll definitely have to, to talk with you more soon about that, about how we can get more bang for your buck with your content and get more out of it than just... These deserve more than three posts is what I keep what I keep getting at. And um, I'll definitely start to uh, start to think of some stuff that uh, that I could help you with for. Yeah. How can we get a lot more than three pieces of content out of all these pairs? Because, I mean, they are just they're absolutely amazing. And anybody who sees your work would tell you that they're absolutely amazing. So a lot more of the same and just uh, up in the quantity, I think, will, will be the next uh, big thing for you. So great job, Gina. Definitely keep it up, though. Um, okay, here, let's see. Uh, Mithril says, Mithril Brush Custom says, if we've already posted one, should we not post again? Or is it better to keep posting? It's better to repost than not post at all. That's something that I definitely believe in. And sometimes you just gotta, you gotta feed the algorithm per se. You gotta feed the beast. You gotta, you know, 
pour more gas on on the fire per se and um so that's why the longer you're doing this the more old content you'll have and um if you can shoot more content than you could imagine for each project that you work on then once you go ahead and you're you're thinking about what am i going to post even if you've posted a photo, let's just talk about these Bumblebee Jordan 6s here. I might do something where I, uh, let's say I'm trying to maximize my content. I could do something where I do a bunch of studio shots. So just up against the white background, you know, that very clean studio aesthetic. And then maybe I do some edited backgrounds, but then I could also go and shoot these outdoor. And when I first post them, I might only do one of those ranges let's just say it's the edited backgrounds well when i need some content and i want to post something five months down the line i might still have some of those shots that i shot outdoors with these that i didn't post to my instagram back then so rather than only shooting like okay here i'm you, you tell yourself okay i made a pair for a client i worked on a pair for a client this week i have to ship them out tomorrow let me go ahead and and take my pictures today i'm going to take two quick pictures of these in two different poses well how can you actually take maybe 20 pictures and then, okay, I'm going to post two to my Instagram now, but down the line when I need some more content, I took all these extra pictures of these shoes. So it's not even like I'm reposting stuff. I'm reposting from new angles. I might have new followers. And if you go ahead and shoot in different locations or just how you, you know, sort of portray the content, you might be telling a totally different story. So like I said, shooting these just up against that clean white studio background could work really well, but I also might want to tell a completely different story with these if I go ahead and shoot these up against a completely dark, gritty background or I go around and I try to find a uh, yellow Camaro from the movies or something like that. Um, who knows? Maybe I go to a, a Chevy dealer and ask if I could take a quick picture of these next to any of their uh, yellow Camaros or, or something like that. You know what I mean? This way you just have more volume of content to choose from. So yeah, uh, Owen Atkinson here says, will there be another time to send in our ideas designs that you might paint for a video like the butterfly one? So the video that you're referring to, I believe has a title called like recreating your designs. And it was when we did two pairs. We did a pair of Madagascar Sunset Moth, aka the Butterfly Jordan ones. And then we did a pink zebra and cheetah pair. And both of those are the Madagascar Sunset Moths. I think I said were either number two or three of my favorite custom shoe designs that I've ever done. I think I had them ranked that high. And uh, the pink zebras were easily, you know, somewhere really high up on the list too in my top 20 or 30 pairs and uh, it was so cool to bring those to life and we did that for hitting 100,000 subscribers on youtube and i plan on doing another one of those just hosting another little mini competition where uh i'll pick a shoe maybe it'll be a jordan one again and i'll create a mock-up so with that one i created a template that you could download and you could go ahead and photoshop on the template or you know people were able to do we had people send in colored sketches or whatever however you want to go ahead and uh design them with whatever design software um and then we picked just our favorite one to bring to life that was one of my favorite videos we've done and like i said it led to one of my favorite designs that i've ever painted and it wasn't even a design i came up with that was from ocd custom uh shout out to sammy joe and um yeah we plan on doing that when we hit 200,000 subscribers here on youtube we are currently at i think 185,000. so we're about 15,000 away and then we'll be doing another one of those you know little mini competitions run it for a week or two and then pick our favorite one we had i can't even remember how many submissions last time but it was there was some it was tough to pick but when i saw those the mock-up for the madagascar sunset moths that colorway is just mind-blowing and it's been really cool because um i'm not somebody who who gets um too mad at this anyway but um there's been a lot of people that have recreated that design and done it on air forces and done it on jordan ones and people have tried to do uh an identical recreation and people have like tried to switch it up a little bit to to add some of their own flavor and it's been so cool to see because i didn't even come up with the design so of course i'm not mad about it 
Um, but it's been really cool to see other people try that thing because it's a it's a tricky theme to sort of pull off too. So yeah, definitely plan on doing another one of those in the future. Ba -ba -ba. Let's see here. Uh, King D Price says, I appreciate you just sitting and talking with everyone. I like to say it's room for everybody here in this lane. You were one of the people I started watching uh, when I needed guidance last year. Very cool. And, and thank you for the compliment, man. And yeah, hopefully, I think that these lives just really hopefully add another layer of uh, relatability, you know, to me and make me seem hopefully more accessible to you guys. And uh, hopefully, you know, I can help you guys in any way possible. Uh, let's see here. Da, da, da. I have a couple of people saying to check my DM there. Let's go ahead and check that out. Let me switch over just in case anybody's sending me any nudes or anything like that. Don't want that to pop up. Just kidding. Just kidding. Let's see here. Do, do, do. Okay, so if you do want to, if you need to DM me, DM me over here on uh, this Instagram. I'm not very, I'm not, I don't post on this Instagram too often, but uh, DM me over here on, let's see, the DCF experience. Do, do, do. But I had, let's see. Let me pull these up. This band, I think, has two pairs she wants to show off. MB Luxury Customs. Okay, and then the two ones you sent me. Up. Oh, those might only be in the uh, other DM rather than here on your feed. Let me go pull those up. One second here. Okay. It'll be fun to hear some, oh, price guessing. Okay, price guessing on these. I will gladly guess the price. And was there another message that would be fun? To... Yeah, price guessing. Okay, so you want me to guess the price on these. Alrighty. I'm always down for that. Let me go ahead and pull these up. Okay, so from MB Luxury Customs here, we have some fun, are these called, forgive me for not knowing the name of these, are these called Nike, are these called the Vandals? I wanna say they're called the Nike Vandals. And both of these are the same, right? Cause they have a little strap at the back. And it looks like just even like a lower cut of, uh, of an Air Force One. I believe that's what these are. Okay, so this one has a little bit of a snake theme and then a lion on them. Okay, and then an eagle on the other side. Okay, I think this is like a 75-ish, maybe a 60-ish dollar shoe. And then we have this one, which is a little bit more of an ab abstract theme. I think it's, okay, so this is a Disney theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to look and I see some some Mickey and Minnie Mouse hands. And then I see the Disney font. It's kind of fun to do the impossible. And I see the little Mickey Mouses. Those are cool. Definitely dig the uh, the photos that you did for these two. I think this photo might be my favorite. That blue fence looks really cool here. Okay, so let's guess the price. Ba -ba -ba. Let's go ahead and, and everybody else watching too. You guys go ahead and uh, let's start off with the Disney pair here. This little Mickey and Minnie Mouse Disney theme. Nike Vandal, what do you guys guess the price is? And then secondly, enter your price for this, uh, this animal theme one where we have the snake, lion, and eagle. I am going to say that the Mickey and Minnie Mouse pair is... This is me assuming it's a $65 shoe. I'm gonna put these at, 
I'm gonna just guess first off somewhere between 175 and 225 and I think I might put it I'm gonna put them at 215 I'm gonna say 215 for the Disney pair final answer and the other one I see someone say is the other one Harry Potter it might be Harry Potter I'm I'm actually not a Harry Potter fan I did see the I, I is this a, a, a Slytherin um, the colors definitely sort of remind me of it but I'm but I'm not sure but this pair I'm just gonna call them the animal pair I'm sorry guys if this is a Harry Potter pair uh, I'm gonna say these again this is me assuming it's a $65 shoe I'm gonna put those at 165 so I have 165 for the second pair and then I have 215 for the Disney pair let me know how I did Lisbon and let's see uh, if, if anybody else got it uh, before me. So we did have a super chat come in here from Gutterboy85. Just says salute. Thank you so much for that, Gutterboy. Really appreciate you supporting the channel like that. That definitely means a lot to us. Definitely continues to help us grow. And, and we really appreciate that. So salute to you also. And uh, thanks for hanging out with us on this uh, episode of DCF Live. Uh, okay, Lisban says, yes, it is a Harry Potter uh, with a map in the background. Okay, cool. Let's see. I must have missed the map. I must have missed. Oh, okay. So within that tan color, that beige. Oh, I thought it was solid. I totally missed that. So it's super subtle, the map behind it. So yeah, if you take a look right behind the lion, you see that I, I that's a very, um, you did a great job with the map, how subtle it is. Very cool, but now I can see it as I continue to zoom in more. So great job. Really dig those. I might need to change my price on those. I'm going to push those up to 185. Final answer 185 for Harry Potter pair, 215 for Disney pair. Lisban, who is the winner? Let me know. That was fun. Uh, the episodes of Guess the Price are, uh, I, I love that. It's just such a fun little cheesy idea that is that is just super cool you know what i mean that's why uh how, how long has the price is right been on air it's been a long time so some other good guesses here in the chat too uh ba -ba -ba. luke says i'm customizing a pair of fred flintstone slides very cool i've never done a flintstones theme before i uh i look forward to seeing those luke you'll have to show me uh, and then Gutter Boy, just with the message before his super chat says, Hey, homie, I started customizing shoes earlier this year. You've been a huge help. Salute. Glad to help any way that we can, Gutter Boy. Glad to help. Okay, so Lizban with her answer here says, I got 4,000 Swedish krona. It's about 470 US dollars. The price is for both, but the client bought the shoes. Okay, so um 470 for both the price is for both but the client bought the shoes okay so you report you were paid 470 for your artwork very cool so some let me see so i'm gonna say did anybody get closer than me somebody says i think the closest one might be cathal mcfarland here says 250 first and 200 second so you guessed about 450 total and uh but yours probably included the shoes and Lisman here says 470 without the shoes great job love to hear it love to hear you getting um great value for for your artwork and an awesome job love to see it and and guess the price i i don't believe it does um but hopefully the the format and the feedback for that show never comes off as me trying to say that um, artwork is worth whatever somebody's willing to pay for it. And hopefully it doesn't come off as, as me trying to say, oh, these shoes aren't worth that much. I'm always, I'm glad to hear you got paid a lot more just than I had initially guessed. I'm just going off of what would I typically expect to maybe see these listed at if, if I were to scroll past them on, you know, maybe like a site like Etsy or some other page that sells custom sneakers. So love to see it. Great job, Lisban. Keep up the uh, great work. Uh, let's see here. Soul Respond says, will there be another episode of Reviewing Your Customs? Also, thanks for everything you do. You're a real inspiration. Absolutely. The next one probably will be within the next uh, month or two. 
we try to space those out every every couple or a few months or so and it's been we're probably at about two months or so since we've done the last one so there will be another one soon we usually post on our instagram stories anytime you know we have openings for reviews or anything like that so definitely uh stay tuned over there Uh, Lisban says, and I just have to say, I would never dare to start with this journey if I did not find your channel. It is so helpful. Thank you. Well, thank you, Lisban. I really appreciate that. And I am super glad and honored to hear that our channel and, and hopefully I have helped you in any way possible because that is certainly the goal of mine. So to hear, um, to hear someone like you say that I have helped you in your business in any way, that, um, that really brings a, a lot of joy to me. And I, I can't remember who I, I did an interview recently for somebody who was doing, I think a, either a blog write up or for maybe they had, they had something. I did an interview recently and it was just talking about, you know, like what are the types of things, you know, sort of in your career and your journey that, that, you know, bring you the most joy or excitement. And, um, a lot of, a lot of times I think that Hearing things like that, that I have helped you grow your business in any way, um, those are those are definitely like those compliments and, and getting those messages that, hey, you know, you helped me start this journey or you helped me grow my business or, or your videos, you know, help change the way I think and, and do things or whatever the case is or you inspired me to do this. Like there is no, there's an, the feeling of joy that I get from that is, is just absolutely incredible. And um, I just truly hope that uh i'll be able to continue to do that and i think the what i enjoy the most is um even though i've only done one was the in-person uh custom sneaker of course and and we're still trying to uh trying to lock up the venue and and with all this other stuff going on hopefully there's no um just with everything going on in the world in a perfect world, we would love to be doing these three to four times a year. And uh, I just know that the joy I got out of doing our one in-person custom course was just one of the, the best experiences of my life. And, and the joy I got out of, of helping people in person, absolutely incredible. So, but, but, but okay, here. So, so yes, uh, uh, just hearing the compliments of you guys saying thank you, all I can continue to do also is, is say thank you guys for tuning in, whether it's here on these live streams, tuning in to any of our standalone videos. means a lot. means a lot. So thank you guys. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Trying to catch up here in the chat, make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, okay, let's check out, do we switch over screens here? We're going to check out Kick It Customs. Now again, I, I've said these with some of the uh, um, reviewing your Instagrams before, but it's a little bit easier if uh, the more content you have and the, the, the bigger your Instagram is, then the more value valuable I believe I can believe as far as, you know, giving um, suggestions or, or critique per se. If, if your Instagram is sort of just starting out or, or very bare, it's of course not that I can't give you valuable feedback, but it, it's just going to be, you quite simply just need to do more sometimes, you know what I mean? If you're just starting out, if there's only a few posts. Um, so... Needless to say, like it, it, I just know that I could provide more valuable to not only you but anybody else watching if there's a little bit more for for me to uh, critique and talk about, like there was with some of these uh, other ones we checked out, like Grail Crew Customs and Customs by G. So let's go ahead and check out now. We're gonna check out Kick It Customs. Let me get that pulled up. Kick It underscore. Okay, let's see. Do I? I don't have it. Um, OBS, switch over. Okay, cool. Here. So, KK Customs. Sneaker artist, veteran owned business specializing in Nike, Jordan, Vans, and Converse brands. Contact us for a quote today. Well, first off, thank you for your service very much, KK. I'm not sure of your first name, um, but again, thank you for your service. First off, 
Let's take a look at some of these pairs. So lately diving into some of the edited backgrounds, Doodle Bob is back. Let me just first off, what I wanna say about these is I like that this isn't something that I feel I, I see a lot of. You, you definitely see nice uh, Photoshop edited backgrounds, but I imagine these were, these almost look like you drew these illustrations of the Doodle Bob and, and maybe you didn't, but it's just still different and unique. It's not just one photo in the background I have to imagine. Because if I'm dissecting this photo, what I think I probably see is you composed a bunch of the pictures together. You did a gradient in the background of that light yellow to the white or the gray. Some drop shadows behind all the shoes. And then those kind of look like like hand-drawn digitally illustrations with the, with the doodle bop. Um, if I were guessing about that photo. And um, I really dig that here. So it looks really good. Let me see. Uh, if there was a follow-up... Ba, ba, ba. But those look really good. The doodle bob is really cool. The how, of course, what you did with the swoosh. Uh, um, great job as far as how you did the SpongeBob and how the hands are reaching behind the swoosh and then over. Great job just as far as your composition goes. The pencil on the swoosh, super simple but super cool. Love how you did these. Um, the other, you know, bikini bottom style backgrounds look great. It was very cool course minor little thing to just bring up here since we talked about earlier in the stream aspect ratio something to consider this just being the 16 by 9 landscape format just as i scroll past these look look at the comparison right here this is cool now we'll get to see it so if i'm just scrolling your feed here this one's 16 by 9 landscape format but as soon as we scroll down to the next post this air force one fills that frame takes up so much more real estate on my screen than if i'm just doing this you know what i mean so just something to consider uh, the Rasta Air Force Ones, those look good. That's not an easy gradient to pull off. Those colors, you would think that they're not that hard to blend. They actually are. And uh, you did a good job here. Uh, let's see some of the other stuff. These cleats. Oh, I do remember seeing these. I think you tagged me in these. I think I saw these. The cleats look great. The Eagle stencil, that looks... If that is a stencil, it might not be. But that looks, that looks super clean. The South... Super clean. Great job with your stencil work. I like the textured background. This is a really cool shot too. Yeah, this is just unique. I'm I'm trying to, again, when I look at a photo, sometimes I want to try to dissect it and, and imagine what you did here, how you set all this up. And um, I'm kind of curious how you did this. I, I, I just love that you're testing out a lot of different things in Photoshop. And this is cool too. I really like this sometimes where you play with both, where you have... You know, your edited backgrounds here, but then you also have a good client photo. Maybe this is, whether this is whoever these are made for, just an outdoor natural lighting photo. That's always great. Love to see that. These are cool. These are super clean. Great job here with this waffle print on the swoosh. Super smooth blends. Great color selection. Super colorful uh, Instagram feed. Love to see it. I think a cool progress shot like this looks great. Great job. I think you said that you have been posting for 60-ish days. So yeah, um, just as far as like a couple quick things that I'll always notice that, it, hey, it's at least worth mentioning. Uh, we want to get some stuff posted on Instagram Reels. We want to get some stuff posted on uh, let's, um, something happened with your sound. I hear you, but kind of with a little echo. Let me check the mic. Mic is still on. Let me know. Everybody else, let me know how it sounds. Hopefully we're still sounding good here in the streaming software. Everything, everything seems to be okay. Let me know if anybody else is hearing any type of, uh, weird echoes or anything like that. Um, but, uh, back to, back to this kick it customs feed here. We want to make sure that we're posting to Instagram reels, Instagram TV, and then trying to stay active on your Instagram stories also. So you only need to post once a day to keep it active every 24 hours. And like, it's, it's something so simple, but anytime somebody new comes to your page, what's great about it is that they'll see that you're active. You know what I mean? If you have something posted to your stories, they'll know that this is an active Instagram account. Okay, this is, you know, a page that I want to follow. You know what I mean? Even if it gives them a 5% five, 5 more of a chance, 
if you, if you give yourself a five percent more of a chance at getting you know that follow from from somebody, uh, that could be good. Definitely different. Okay, audio is different. Let me just double check a couple things here. Mic's still plugged in, definitely still seeing it. Maybe if I switch over scenes here, let me know what that did. Ba, 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 there's reverb. Hmm. Let me know if uh, that fixed it. Hopefully it did. Go figure at this point that we would have uh, something go wrong, but hopefully that did it. But when I check in the streaming software, everything else still seems to be good. So hopefully that did it. Um, okay. Ba -ba. Slight echo. Ba -ba -ba. Can you please look into I have both of my parents here in, in the chat. I didn't even know my mom had a YouTube account. So shout out to Mama and Papa DeJesus here in the live. Good to see you guys. And uh, I just heard Dexter get up. Sounds like he is doing good up there. Just heard him wake up from his nap. Um, let me see here. Luke says, sent a picture of the Flintstone shoes. Let me go ahead and see if I see those. Do, do, do. Luke, make sure you send those over to, um, maybe the mic's too close to me, not sure. Um, send those over to the DCF Experience uh, Instagram account. And I will uh, try to pull those up. But let's see, what else, uh, what did we have pop up here? That, uh, interesting, definitely some interesting news what's been going on lately as far as some of these uh, lawsuits that have come out against uh, a couple other uh, sneaker customizers. We had one that was against uh, 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 Drip Creations was the page, and uh, Nike had posted, at least what's been you know publicly posted about the lawsuit was that Nike said, hey, they're doing... They're using uh, essentially fake Air Forces, and they created their own shoe that looks incredibly similar to an Air Force. Now, of course, I'm no lawyer, so I'm not going to go ahead and try to speak in, in terms of black and white as far as understanding the law. But what I think where they sort of violate the uh, uh, gray area that some customizing can live in is that they were buying fake Air Force Ones and doing their thing with them. And then they created their own shoe that looks just like an Air Force One. And instead of air on the midsole, it says drip. And um, so when they're selling just those, Nike is no longer being paid in any way from them. And they're just selling their own product. Whereas like if I sell these, I have to purchase an authentic Jordan 6 and then sell them. And then there was another one against another customizer. I can't remember the name, but he was doing shoes with... Um, um, some different brands like Amazon Prime, UPS, I think a USPS one. And then I think what that led to was a little bit of the brand confusion, which is what came about when those Lil Nas X shoes were released where it could lead to people thinking that this is an actual Nike release. And there's some other stuff that I've been hearing that he was a former Nike employee. And um, people have said, oh, this one's kind of personal, them going after him and all this stuff. So. I had hundreds of people reach out to me and, you know, ask for, ask for my thoughts on it or whatnot. And, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not a lawyer, so they're just my, my thoughts on it. But as far as like, is customizing legal? You know what I mean? Is this what we're even doing legal? And there's definitely a lot of precedent with fair use law. And once you buy a pro and the first sale doctrine 
and um, you know there's a lot to a lot of this has been handled in the Supreme Court with uh, jailbreaking within the last decade or so of um, you know Apple lost that one about jailbreaking because once you buy the iPhone it's yours to do what you want with it and all these different types of things so you know as far as is it still okay to start a custom sync business yeah absolutely there's not no judge is going to say okay no one's ever allowed to to paint a pair of shoes again or something like that and i just think a simple way to think about it is if nike for whatever reason just said hey we're gonna we want to completely shut down all the creatives in the world um which they wouldn't they would probably go after two of the you know like okay who's the biggest recon uh sneaker customizer in the world the shoe surgeon Let's go ahead and shut him down. And then who's the biggest, you know, shoe painter in the world? Mosh. Let's go ahead and shut him down. Now, you know, Mosh has, has made his own original shoe. And um, Nike didn't go after either of these guys if they really wanted to, like, send a message per se. So those are just some of my thoughts on it. Um, but a lot of people have asked if I was going to do a standalone video and things like that. And uh, I tried to. I don't want to become a, a, a drama channel or anything like that. And, um, but I think so, just unfortunately, because <laughs> it's, this essentially became news, you know what I mean? And with news comes things taken out of context and comes articles being written for clicks and headlines and things like that. And, um, I think that a lot of the sneaker blogs probably put headlines on their posts and things like Nike suing all sneaker customizers, are sneaker customizers in trouble, things like that. So... Uh, definitely, definitely no need to, to the, anybody who's not doing anything that they don't think, am I do like those people, the people who were, who Nike filed lawsuits against have definitely thought to themselves, okay, am I doing something potentially illegal here? Potentially. But sometimes you write it out and say, let's go ahead and, and keep going until we, uh, you know, get yelled at. How's the old saying go? It's better to ask for forgiveness than uh, permission or something like that. So, um, let's see here. Okay, I had, a couple of, I had a super chat come in here from Matthew Chambers. Thank you so much, Matthew. It says, I started customizing last year, but I fell off when school started. Any tips for getting my motivation back? 101 Customs. Let's go ahead. I'd love to see uh, some of your work here, Matthew. Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, 101 Customs. See some of your pairs here. Okay, we have 101 Customs here. So we have some Drip Air Forces. We have some Deadpool cleats. Smooth gradient there. Great job on the cleats. A little bit of stenciling with the hexagons. That looks good. The character looks good. Some Sesame Street slides, a little bit of Cookie Monster and Elmo, some restoration stuff. And then we have some Fresh Prince, Air Force Mids. Those are clean. Great color palette there. Yeah, motivation to, to keep going. I know that, you know, school is uh, is definitely a, a huge part of what can unmotivate you if you feel like, okay, I don't have the time to get to anything so I can definitely make it tough. Um, but you know, just anytime you're, you're, you're lacking motivation, sometimes, you know, a few things that I like to, to say to do are, or try to remember why you got started in the first place. What is it? Is it your love for sneakers? Is it your love for art? Um, you know, and, and if it's your love for art, maybe you just need to, maybe you need to experiment on something other than shoes also. Maybe that's what, you know, can sort of reignite your burners per se. Um, and if it's, if it's just like sort of lacking motivation because I don't have ideas, then it could definitely be a matter of, let me go ahead and try, try to find a bunch of new customizers or a bunch of different artists, people who could sort of get my creative juices flowing again. That's something that you could definitely do. And if it's a matter of lacking motivation, because maybe it's about, I don't have, um, I can't get new clients or I can't get new supplies or anything like that. Sometimes you just have to put out more work into the world. So just d doing work for free sometimes, you know what I mean? Reaching out to more of your friends and family um, who you might 
ask, hey, would it be okay if you gave me a pair of shoes, you either go and buy yourself a new pair or just hand me a pair, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a custom theme that I wanna do for you. And that's something that I uh, absolutely would recommend doing. So yeah, thank you for the uh, Super Chat, Matthew. And uh, if there's anything ever else that we can help you with, more than glad to do so. Ba -ba -ba. Let's see here. Uh, Antoine says, my stencil transfer tape seems to be tacky. I've tried it three to four different kinds. Any suggestions? I use Green Star Lay Flat Classic, and I believe I purchased it from US Cutter. USCutter.com. Definitely check that one out. Um, okay, here. Let's see. Mithril. Okay, we are going to check out Mithril Brush Customs now. Ba, ba, ba. Mithril Brush Customs. Okay, so um, I think almost all the, one, all the ones that we've talked about today, um, it's just worth mentioning that sometimes when you add you know, characters or symbols in your username, sometimes that can lead to it being a little bit harder for people to find you because it's easy to forget that underscore or that period, in this case, mithril.brush.customs. Is it the most important thing in the world? No, but it's easy for people to forget it and therefore it could lead people to not finding you when you think to yourself, um, oh boy, um, does, that, does that really matter? Is it that hard to actually type in a dot or an underscore? No, it's not that hard, but it absolutely could lead to, who knows, maybe 5 to 10% of the people who try to type in your username don't find you. So it's something to, to at least consider. Something I always like to bring up. For example, when I was creating my uh, username for my email for my website, so our website is dehazusync.com, I was just going to do my name, so something very simple like Dylan at dehazusync.com, but Dylan is by probably like 80% of people, my name is misspelled because either people think it's D-Y-L-A-N or people think it's D-I-L-L-I-O-N. A lot of people add a second I, like Dillian. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but hey, my name has always been what it is. And um, so if I would have done Dylan at DeJesus Inc., there's a really good chance that a lot of people would have misspelled my name and then I wouldn't, wouldn't have gotten those emails and I could have missed those inquiries or something like that. So... Just super minor little stuff to consider. But let's take a look at these. So Camille Fowley, customizer clothing, shoes, accessories, mini painting on the side in Massachusetts. 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 Uh, let's see. So we got some Pumas here. Those are clean. I dig that colorway. I like that shot up against the uh, up against that wall. Looks like we have a jacket here too. That's super clean. Get a nice zoom in there. Great job. Really great jacket. Yeah, look at the details here. Super clean. Love that. Oh, these PlayStation Air Forces are sick. Mm-hmm. Those are great. Great job on these. Love those. Love me a good uh, old school PlayStation 1 theme. So yeah, a lot of clothing, a lot of jackets. Love to see that. Really clean work on your jean jackets. Those are great. Some Sailor Moon. A lot of cool stuff here. A lot of cool stuff. Let's see some of the video. A little bit of a, little bit of a time lapse, a work in progress here. That looks good. Super intricate, this design. I gotta watch this one until the end. I wanna see this come to life. Oh yeah, now we're getting to the fine lining. There we go. This is nice. See some Posca. That 
That was cool. That was really good. Funny enough, Posca just reached out to me for a, uh, a sponsorship opportunity like a week ago. I got a good giggle out of that one. Clean, clean. Done some reels too. Let's check out this reel real quick. Try to super minor. There's some way to save your TikToks without the watermark. There's either a website where you type in the link and it'll download it without the little TikTok watermark or there's some setting in TikTok. I think I heard Instagram Reels soon might like have the software to detect that you're posting it with the TikTok watermark and it might not even allow it. So just, just something super minor here. Multiple Reels, love it. So yeah, I would do some little bit of Instagram TV, make sure you're active here on the stories. Fill out these highlights a little bit more. You got one with your uh, Sailor Moon. Oh, a couple different Sailor Moon uh, pieces that you've done. So the different jackets and the purse. Um, fill out those highlights a little bit more. Like I said, do some IGTV. Active on the stories. Keep working on the photography. Um, but the, the idea is really good. Like So for example, something that I could say about these is that you want to, when you're shooting up against brick, try to get a little bit further away so that you can create some depth between your subject and the background. So the further you get away from the wall, the more distance between your lens and that brick wall, the more blurred out that background will be, and that's just gonna be a better photo. But the composition of, of how you framed it here is good. If you could just come a couple feet off that wall, this photo will be even better. So yeah, just something minor there to work on, but great job. Uh, dumb question, is IGTV just saved live videos? You can upload videos to IGTV, I'm pretty sure, unless they only allow you to upload to Reels now. Let me click, uh, do, do, do. Um, I believe that you can post to IGTV. I know that I have, um, I save all of my lives when anytime I go live and do Q and A's on Instagram, I save all those, post those to IGTV. But I also believe um, you can post a separate video, a vertical video, also to IGTV, just like you would to Reels. Pretty sure. Um, so let's see here. Uh, uh, Blue says I sent a pair of custom shoes to a YouTuber and she gave me a shout out, but people searched Insta for blue underscore O2 instead of blue, but instead of the L, there's a one underscore O2. So I think a, I missed a decent opportunity for more followers, ha ha ha. Absolutely, and you see, that's just what I was talking about. It's, it's so simple, it's so minor, it seems like, well, do we even need to talk about this? But in the grand scheme, time over time, how much you know missed opportunity is there and you know what we talked about when we started at the at the start like you know posting the correct aspect ratio and all that stuff is this like it's just posting going from landscape to portrait format for your photos going to overnight grow your custom sneaker business no but it's all of these little things added up putting us in the best position to win you know what i mean that's what it's all about sometimes at some point you let the chips fall where they may you sort of let everything fall in line, but otherwise you're just, you gotta, you know, put yourself in the best position to win. I know I ended yesterday's video with, uh, I like to say, create your own luck. This is what I mean. Put yourself, do everything that you possibly can to put yourself in the best position to actually be lucky. You know what I mean? So uh, let's see her. Luke, I think has a pair of the Flintstones from almost their designs. Um, Luke, here we go. These are the Flintstone shoes. Ah, look at that. Yeah, Fred on the um, on the Flintstones there. Cool stuff, man. Those look good. Looks good. Are those Nike slides? I can't. Nope. Under Armour, I think. But yeah, looks good, man. Great job. Great job. Uh, we had another super chat here come in from Spaz Out Pedro. It says, I've just started customizing shoes and I can use any constructive criticism. My page is Drocapalot. And do you know any vinyl strong enough for hats? Okay, let's take a look at your Instagram here. Um, let's go back. 
Let's go to draw cap lot. Do you have to play shoe hat orders? Okay, so you do some hats too. Cool. I gotta take a look at some of these. So do you do embroidery plus painting? Do you do all embroidered, a little bit of both? So definitely doing some hand, I like the, I like the head mannequin. <laughs> That's funny. Um, let's see. Cool stuff. The Playboy on the sock set. We got Jason on the Brewer set. We have some, these were Gucci, right? Gucci Air Forces. Let's take a look at these. Okay, just painting. Okay, so not the embroidery. Gotcha. Let's take a quick look at this reel, see how these turn out. So far clean. Oh yeah. All right. I dig that. I dig those. Did you burn a little bit of the sock liners also? Let me take a look at the photos for these. Yeah, look at that. That's cool. A little bit of burning on the sock liners. That looks good. Now you want to like, now we want to try to level up the, the burn effect on these. So, you know, where you have the, the different, you know, like cutouts of where you then have the Gucci print starting to go from just a solid orange line to now actually mixing in some highlights and some shadows with your yellows and your reds and your deep oranges. That's really going to bring these to life. So try to look at, you know, some creators who are really good at this effect. And that might be somebody like a, like a just win customs. Um, as far as, do I know any vinyl that is strong enough for hats? I would definitely recommend checking out, uh, FDC. F as in fairy, D as in Dylan, C as in cat, 3700 glitter vinyl. It is pretty tricky to find. It's not on Amazon. Um, the site that I always buy from is Etsy. You could buy it in either sheets or rolls, but it is super strong adhesive and it'll definitely stick to the wool of hats. So yeah, good stuff. Doing stuff on your reels, posting to your stories, bio is simple and clean. Uh, let's get some posts on IGTV. I like the story highlight covers that you have here. So how to place an order might just be, yep, your FAQs, uh, payment, and then some of your client client cam. Yep, this is cool. So different client shots. Dig that. Shipping. Yep, all good stuff. Good stuff on your little, uh, these little story highlights. Dig those. Keep posting. Yeah, you're just starting to do a bunch more reels. So definitely keep doing that. And yeah, look at this. Like you're getting some of these, multiple of these videos have thousands of views. And your account only has, you know, now this isn't a bad thing because you said um, you just started, I believe, but 162 followers. So, I mean, that's that's pretty awesome when you have 162 followers, but you're some, but you're still able to get 4,000 views on a reel. That's, that's really good based off of your audience size, you know what I mean? So absolutely keep that up. Absolutely keep up the good work. And that's cool, man. I think that, uh, at least I don't see enough uh people painting on hats so it's really cool to see somebody doing hats and shoes okay guys we will go for another 10 minutes or so here 10 minutes or so we will call it a day we've been going yeah about a, a buck 45 right now yeah we'll go another 10 minutes or so guys this has been fun thank you guys for hanging out with me on this friday this episode of dcf live Uh, William Clue says, I DM'd you a pair of Venom Air Force Ones. I used the tracing paper trick I learned from you. It worked great. Um, awesome. I am super glad to hear that, William. We have done two videos on our page uh, that are called, like, how to, how to transfer any image. And um, both of those videos have performed very well for us. And that's a, a cool little trick that I learned in architecture school using tracing paper. And um, 
that's something that I did because I didn't have a stencil cutter for my first probably four to five, maybe six years of customizing. And uh, so that's how I would get any logos or images on my shoes using that technique. And uh, it's funny, you know, you're always going to get um, the, the feedback on, on those videos is always awesome. But of course, every once in a while, you're going to get uh, just trolls. It's the internet, of course. And there was one the other day in one of those videos and says, uh, this trick is absolutely terrible because um, you're going to leave pressure marks on the shoe. And um, I, you're using a, a mechanical lead, whatever pencil. You're not, you're not going to damage the leather by you're you're basically drawing on it. Even if you're tracing really hard, you're not going to damage the leather with a pencil. So, I, I mean, sometimes you you know, people just want to be mad on the internet to be mad. <laughs> but I thought that was that was a funny one because obviously these these are both videos that I think have like. 500,000s of views there's nothing but positive feedback and then there's just somebody who wants to uh wants to be mad so zuki custom joined us how you doing buddy man i i love seeing uh you post your um your numbers that you're getting on your tiktok lives man and i need to uh get my butt over to tiktok live because i think you posted one the other day was it you either had like six, 60,000 or 6,000 viewers on it or something. Just absolutely insane, man. You're killing it over on TikTok. I love to see it. Um, I, I just love to see customizers get creative on, on different platforms. And TikTok's been around, you know, a couple years now. So it's super cool to see, um, to see people just crushing it on all these different platforms. Uh, the lab works here says, how long did it take for your business to take off? I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I wonder if I should continue or maybe should give it up. Look, every single customizer that you look up to, I promise anybody has any artist, any independent entrepreneur has asked themselves that exact question. And as far as um, when does your business take off? Everything's relative. You know what I mean? I still, of course, feel that my business could go to another level. You know what I mean? So as far as, as take off, it, it's totally relative to, to, you know, what you consider, how long, um, does that mean like how long did it take you to get a certain amount of followers to make, you know, a certain amount of money per year or, or something like that? Because no matter what, as soon as you achieve those, those, um, milestones, there's new milestones that you create. You know what I mean? So as soon as you hit a hundred thousand followers on YouTube or something like that, right away it's just okay. Well, how do I get to two hundred? Or or I'm nothing until I I get to a, a million or or something like that. You know what I mean? So it's it, it's totally relative, but it's it, it's going to take time. You know what I mean? And and I started ten years ago, and um, you got to pay your dues in any craft, and. The space, of course, the space is now more, um, there's more competition than before. There's there's way more people painting shoes than, than ever before, of course. That number is going to continue to go up. But it's just about staying consistent with it. It's about not giving up. You only get hurt on a roller coaster if you jump off. And there's going to be ups and downs to any business, you know what I mean? And you just sort of need to figure out what is what is worth fighting for, you know what I mean? And if it's... I, I absolutely love, like, if you're asking yourself, should I give up or not? You really, of course, have to ask yourself, do I love this so much that, like, I'm willing to, I'm not willing to fail and I'm willing to continue to struggle because I believe in myself so much that I can get to that point. I know I can get there. I just know it won't be easy, but I just need to keep trucking on. And believe me, I thought to, th thought that to myself plenty of times that it's like, man, I, I do not see the light at the end of the tunnel, but you have to really believe in yourself and know that somehow you're going to get there. You're just, you're just deep in the cave and you got to keep, you got to keep pushing on and keep turning the corners and keep throwing darts at the board and, and something will stick eventually. So that's, uh, that's what I would say about that. So keep going, man. You got it. You got it. We are rooting for you. Ba, ba, ba. Zuki says, every everyone live, I tell people to follow you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And uh, man, I, I hope that, I just hope that you're crushing. I hope that you're making good money from those TikTok videos. I hope that creator fund is uh, doing, doing good for you. I believe Instagram might be introducing a creator fund, which is interesting. It makes sense. Instagram doesn't want everybody moving to TikTok. 
Um, so I think that that makes a lot of sense for Instagram to consider paying creators. You know, YouTube has paid creators for a long time thanks to, you know, uh, the YouTube's ad revenue service. TikTok introduced the creator fund. I would love to see uh, Instagram do that. I think that that would be a smart move for them. Uh, Zuka says, are, we, are you going to the Evan the Artist meetup in New York? I am not, unfortunately. Um, the end of this year is, is crazy for me. I have uh, football seasons right around the corner. I have my second baby due in September, six weeks away. So uh, nearing the end of the pregnancy, there's always a, a lot to a lot to get uh, in line and in place. And then we are trying to, I'm trying to have uh, our course, the DCF Experience, hopefully in October. So the... The end of the year here, we're almost in August, so these final um, five months here are, are going to be absolutely crazy for me. So I would love to. Evan is the man. I know that's going to be a great turnout. And uh, it's <laughs> Evan the artist. If you're not following him, man, you need to because what that kid's going to accomplish in the next 10 years is just going to be mind-boggling. So absolutely mind-boggling so all right guys that is going to do it for me thank you so much for joining us for this episode of dcf live it has been so great hanging out with all of you this was a really fun one hopefully uh we touched on a lot of a lot of really good information that um hopefully will help you guys when it comes to uh growing your following growing your instagram hopefully growing your business because growing your social media following is what will in turn um, you know, really grow your following and hopefully customizers and artists as a whole are able to make money from, I want to help people understand that you can make money from other, uh, you want to have different streams of revenue because there's only so much you can do with your hands. There's only so many shoes you can paint in a year. So how can you start getting paid for, you know, the content that you put out into the world or for the brand opportunities that arise because you've built a nice following, you've built a really clean, coherent social media. Because I, I just, it, it took me a long time to realize that. You think, okay, I'm going to get faster, so I'll be able to do seven shoes per week instead of four shoes per week. Or I'm just going to grow my following a little bit, so then I'm just going to have more client requests and all that. But how can you do less with your hands, but you know how can you get paid for your content? Hopefully that's something that more artists and more customizers can start to take serious. And I know that once I was able to do those things, those dramatically helped increase because all of that's part of your business. So that's going to increase your bottom line. And uh, oh man, let's get all artists paid. Let's let's break up that old tire cliche of, of the hungry, starving, broke artist. Let's, let's, get, let's get the new cliche of the well-paid artists thanks to thanks to uh, social media and, and just the passion that we have for art. And let's create great content around it and uh and uh continue love doing it so thank you guys so much that's gonna be it for me appreciate you guys tuning in and i will uh probably next week we'll be doing a live stream i don't think there will be a video so probably next friday hopefully i will see you guys back all right take care everybody Bye bye